Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Title Talk with Kevin T. Well, that's me. You've come to the right place. And today we have another fantastic episode. We're bringing to you Adam Young with Insurance Express, who's going to talk a little bit about the insurance world. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. By the way, happy belated birthday. I know your birthday was yesterday and I saw you, you had a, a fantastic celebration and a couple of drive-bys and it's just the new way of celebrating birthdays. So happy birthday. Thank you again. Yeah, it was great. It was one nonstop surprise after another. Clients, uh, you know, uh, family, friends, business affiliates, everyone came out and it was great. Well, that's good. That's the way it should be. Yeah. So obviously we're in a networking group together and I follow you online to see you have a lot of uh, the common people that, that I'm friends with as well, which tells me, you know, you do a ton of networking. Uh, and, and I saw a quote today from a very famous poet that said, when you learn, teach, when you get, give. And, you know, we love to just teach people as much as we can. And I'm in the insurance world myself. And we wanted to bring you on just to kind of talk a little bit about what we see going on. We know we entered hurricane season. Uh, we had a very nasty storm the last couple of days uh, that's been pushing through. So let's talk a little bit about hurricane season and what does that mean for the insurance business? Well, it's it's always a trying time during hurricane season. As you know, it starts June 1st, it ends November 30th, and it uh, continues to run. But as you saw, we had an early naming of a storm, and uh, it's going to be an active season. They're predicting 14 to 16 storms and seven to nine of them being hurricanes. So, um, you know, not too long ago, we had Harvey over in Texas that created the most damage of almost any hurricane out there. And with the flooding and with the with the storms, it's it can be devastating. And uh, people really have to take a look at their policies, see what their deductibles are. Because sometimes when people got into a policy, it was it was a cost issue to qualify for the loan, and they might have put on a higher hurricane deductible. So to their surprise, sometimes when they want to go put in a claim, they have a five percent hurricane deductible, which would could be on a two hundred thousand dollar coverage. $10,000 deductible. So uh, people get sticker shock with that. So it's real important to pull out your policy, take a look at it, see what your deductibles are, and um, you know, do it now before any hurricane gets in the box and we can't write any new policies. So it's, uh, it's an important time in, in South Let's Florida. So let's talk about that. You you said the magic word, the box, and, and you know, I was driving home. I took the family to Lion Country Safari on, um, so on Saturday or Sunday, when I was driving home, my entire street was covered with, uh, you know, the palm trees from, uh, I guess, people, my neighbor that didn't do some great tree trimming. And mm -hmm. you know, we talk about this famous box now that we're in the hurricane season. And we see it a lot when it comes to closings and clients never want to hear the word, you know, we're in the box. You never want to hear that. Uh, what does that mean from an insurance perspective? Uh, and then the second question tied to the box is what can consumers do if they know a hurricane is, let's say, 10 days out? Are there options for them just in case we get into the box to maybe get coverage early? Yeah, it's an important part of the hurricane policy. As a hurricane approaches the area, the insurance companies or the uh, carriers out there formulate a box that once a storm gets into that that designated geographic area, they stop writing or they cease writing policies or making any changes to their current policies. So it's important to keep your eye on if you have a closing coming up and you don't have coverage bound yet to go ahead and bind it and um, and then just wait it out until your, your closing time. And that way you do have coverage in case you are able to close uh, in that time period, and you don't have to worry about the storm approaching. But like I said, as the storms approach, the carriers stop riding, and uh, that's when everyone starts to panic, and they go, do I have flood insurance? Do I have, um, you know, or people that are running or self-insuring themselves right now without any coverage at all start panicking and call me up and say, hey, can I get coverage right now? As long as we're not in the box yet, yes, I can get you coverage. But uh, once we enter that, that famous box, there's there's no carrier out there that's going to write coverage. 
All right. So, and, and for those of you that are watching, you know, we are doing this live and there's actually a storm outside our office here. So you may have seen the screen go uh, black there for a second. Uh, but, you know, we are streaming this live. And, and what we were basically talking about is there's this magic box that surrounds Fort Lauderdale. Uh, if you're down here, or pretty much the entire state. So when that storm gets super close, you know, we, we get called from the client saying, all right, we're ready to close. And we're like, do you have your insurance? And they're like, well, no. And I'm like, well, you should have bound the insurance early, which means, yes, you may have to pay out of pocket up front in order to get the insurance in place. But what's the, the flip side is that you may not get the house. You may not be able to close. So if you're anticipating a closing and we're in hurricane season and you know a storm is 10 days out, you know, there's a reason people start running, looking for um, fuel all the time, gas for the generator and well, cases of water, because they're doing it two days out, one day out, as opposed to doing it 10 days out and buying enough supplies before this even hits. So it's super, super important to make sure you're doing it. So so thank you for that. Let's talk. Let's flip a little bit and talk about floods. Let's talk about the misconception of people thinking, well, a flood may be a broken pipe. Versus, you know, for people that want to get flood insurance, what is flood insurance and what does it cover? You're absolutely right. People always say to me, don't I have flood insurance included in my policy? Flood insurance is a separate policy from your homeowner's insurance. Your homeowner's insurance does include most of the time, depending on how it is written, uh, a pipe that breaks, a water heater that bursts, any water damage regarding your interior of your home. Flood insurance is uh, flooding from rising water from the outside. Um, kind of like I mentioned to you before about Harvey. Harvey sat above Texas for a period of time, created a massive amount of flooding. 80% of the people in Texas that got flooded were not in a required flood zone. And they, um, they ended up not having any coverage due to the flooding that was happening due to Harvey. So even if you're not in a flood zone in Florida, I encourage you to look into flood insurance. It's very inexpensive at, you know, typically if you're not, if you're in a preferred zone, it's gonna be about $516 at the max. And, but it's gonna give you peace of mind when hurricanes come in and your wife or your partner, or whoever sees the, the water coming up to the edge of the house going, oh my God, do we have flood insurance? Now, that, at that point, that's not the time to get it. Now is the time to look into it because there is a 30-day wait period if you are in a flood zone to get coverage. Now, we, we do have some private market flood companies that only wait, have a waiting period of two weeks. And the last couple of years ago, there used to be companies that would only have three days waiting period. So when we were a little bit out, a couple like a week out before a storm, we were still able to get flood insurance but that's not the case anymore. It's two weeks to 30 days waiting period. And for thank you, for those of you watching, if you wanna ask Adam a question live, please put so in the comments there and we'll try and get to your questions. Uh, we have a couple more things to talk about. And, and I have flood insurance on my house. I live all the way out west in Parkland, Florida, and I'm not in a flood zone, but I have flood insurance. And I'll tell you, we, we live on a canal and when the storms get really bad and it rains back to back, the water starts getting pretty close. I mean, I probably have about a 20 foot distance from the canal to my house. And I'll tell you, we've seen it get about three quarters of the way up where, you know, you get a little concerned that if this continues, you could have a problem. So right, absolutely. Uh, it's and an I'm, insurance. It's an important insurance to have. Yeah, right, so I'm in a preferred zone as well. And I have it as well on my home. Yeah. It's, you know, I always tell you, I'm the insurance guy. So I always make sure I'm fully insured with everything. I don't right, know right. when it comes to insurance. I believe in it. Right. So let's talk a little bit about different carriers. So, the, you know, the difference between going to a carrier direct, you know, we use the analogy talking about like all state insurance or Geico versus mm -hmm. going to a broker. So we don't necessarily have to talk about auto insurance, you know, which we can get to in a little bit, but we want to just talk about the differences for people to understand that by coming to a broker like you, you're working for them and you have options versus calling, let's say, uh, a larger name carrier directly. You're basically, they're working for the underwriter themselves to get the insurance. So talk a little bit about the differences so they understand, you know, broker versus direct insurance. Yeah, definitely. Uh, a lot of uh, people, when they're shopping around, they go to a captive agent or a captive company where they only have one line of insurance. With Insurance Express, um, we're 
fortunate to have over 50 different homeowners insurance carriers and over 15 different auto carriers to really shop around for the best uh, coverage and the best price for our clients. And my allegiance and, um, is to my clients and not to the carriers. Yes, I have an obligation to them to make sure that the business that we place with them is good business and uh, coverage meets what their criteria is. But I'm looking out for my client, making sure that they're well covered uh, in case something happens. And uh, I wanna make sure that uh, they have the proper coverage at the best price. And when you go to a captive agent, they only have one product and they only have the one uh, offering. Uh, you know, I get a lot of people that call me from, uh, they shop USAA and they go, uh, the price is astronomical. Well, they only have one thing to offer you where I shop it through 50 different carriers and I give you the best price with the best situation. Absolutely. So thank you. And, and Robbie, thank you for that message. Uh, Robbie says he went to uh, high school with me and lives around the corner from you. So yeah, small world there. Facebook is bringing in some people uh, and connecting the dots here, which is, is great. So let's talk, we say 50 carriers. So how do you possibly know who to use, what to use, where to find coverage? Like, do you have some type of software? Is it just maybe years of experience? What determines one carrier versus the other for a homeowner? Well, I'm very fortunate. The owner of our agency created a software where we put in the criteria of the, the client's home um, and the area and all their um, specifications. And we put it into our system and it comes back about 20 minutes later with all the different carriers and all their different pricing. And then we go into it and then we um, really tweak it a little bit just to make sure that everything that was inputted came out correctly and that they have the best coverage at the best price. And, um, and then we proceed from there. And full disclosure to everyone. So for those of you that have known me for a long time, I used to own a uh, PNC agency. So I know some of the corners that some of these shady agents take, which is, you know, they may, they may, you know, you have this big fancy gourmet kitchen and they put, you know, less than basic just to get the replacement cost down and the coverage down to give you a better price. So you want to be careful who you're writing your insurance with, uh, because you want to make sure, like Adam just said, is you're getting the best possible coverage at the best possible rate. I mean, it's super important. Uh, and, and, you know, even if you're watching this and you're renting a home, uh, I'm assuming you can help renters as well. Absolutely. Maybe, you know, renting a home, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, renters insurance is very important. Um, as I mentioned in our B&I group a couple of weeks ago, I had a client who had a renter's policy and they had a fire. And thank God they did have coverage because it is replacing their personal items and affording them some money to go live somewhere else while they uh, they make arrangements. So it, it's another important coverage. Anyone driving a car, anyone living anywhere, it's important to have some type of insurance uh, in place so you are well covered. And insurance is there for when you need it. Uh, not everyone wants it. Not everyone wants to pay for it. It, it hurts me as much as it, hurt, as it hurts everyone else to write that check every month for my auto insurance or for my home insurance. but uh, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. That's correct. It's listen, I'm in the insurance world. Like I said, I mean, I have every type of insurance you could possibly think of, whether it's my business insurance, my personal insurance, our boat insurance. I mean, we pretty much insure everything we can possibly insure. I even insure myself, life insurance, disability insurance, long-term care insurance. Yeah. You, know, you just want to make sure that you're, you're covered for the what ifs. And I know some people try and cut corners, uh, you know, they try and cut corners with auto insurance, which is another feature. So let's move on to that before we wrap up. Um, sure. What are the options for auto insurance? You know, I know some people way under insure and I know someone like me, I probably over insure to protect for the what ifs. So what's what's the difference when someone doesn't have good insurance on their car? Well, you know, um, unfortunately, sometimes you hear about the hit and runs out there. Majority of the you know, a good portion of the people out there are riding without any insurance. So for the people that do have insurance, they get hit by someone who's underinsured or doesn't have any insurance. That's where the un um, uninsured motorist part of your policy becomes very important. You know, you want to take care of yourself 
And like you said, you have life insurance, you have health insurance, but uh, the uninsured motorist is a, is a part where it's going to help pay for those medical bills and, and repair your car the way that uh, it needs to be done. And just the, like I said, we work with about 15 different auto insurance carriers from uh, MetLife to Travelers to Progressive, and there, there's many others. Uh, and you want to make sure that you have the right coverage. Yes, if you have a lease, um, the the person who's leasing the car to you, the company, is going to require some minimum coverages. But you want to make sure that you have enough coverage and that you are protecting yourself, your family, and your assets. And that's what insurance is doing. It's protecting all your assets. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, we try and keep these short and sweet. I am going to put your information below. Uh, as you see at the bottom of this video, Insurance Express 561-345-7340. Again, Insurance Express. Adam, thank you for taking the time to come on. Hope thank you for having me. viewers found great value in what you're having to offer and they understand the trust of having an insurance agent on your side to pre-plan. You know, the whole idea is we want these people, as soon as this video is over, to pick up the phone and call you so you can pre-plan. Make sure you're yeah, getting the best absolutely. possible rate on insurance. And if they're not, if, if they're getting a good rate, you'll tell them. And if they're not getting yeah, a good absolutely. rate, you'll be able to shop them around and see, you know, what options are available. You know, what I realized many years ago when I opened uh, my insurance agency, which I, you know, I no longer have, uh, but I opened it, I realized that for just a few dollars a year, sometimes you can double certain coverages or drop your deductible from two hundred from five hundred dollars to two hundred and fifty dollars uh you know and it, it, just for a couple of dollars and a lot of people do not realize you can get so much more coverage for such a little bit amount of premium and and someone like you will be honest and tell them that to make sure they're well protected and you know it, it's the same way on the homeowner side sometimes the difference between a two percent hurricane deductible and a five percent hurricane deductible is a hundred dollars why wouldn't you spend eight dollars a month to have a much lower deductible and yeah. those are the things that i'm going to try to point out to someone when they call me and say you know well uh, you know sometimes it's even better for a thousand dollar deductible hurricane deductible because it makes more sense absolutely so thank you so much for joining us for those of you that are watching please hang up this video uh stop watching give adam a call let him check out your insurance policies whether it's home auto, flood insurance, renter's insurance, just make sure you have the proper coverage for the ifs in life or when it happens, you wanna make sure you're properly covered. Also, don't forget, we are having our iBuyer versus traditional real estate seminar this Friday. Just check out our Facebook page, you'll see all of our listed events on there. Uh, and you just need to register for the webinar. We're gonna be doing another two or three weeks of webinars on various different topics. So this Friday is iBuyers versus traditional real estate. So as always, thanks for watching Title Talk with Kevin T. I'll see you on the next episode. Next week, we are having my virtual mentor, very well-known, very famous uh, entrepreneur, has over 3 million followers on social media. It's going to be a great, great, great seminar. We only have about 15 minutes with him. Uh, so don't forget to look out for the text reminders and the email reminders for that one. So thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you at the closing table coming up soon. Have thanks a great for having me. Appreciate it and stay safe.